Okay, so welcome back to Painting with Chris. Um, we finished this up last week. I'm just going to put my name on it. And then I'm going to do something. I'm going to work on another one. I'm going to work on this painting of Groningen. And what's up with my pens, man? I can't seem to keep these things properly clean. Also, it's like this ink. I think I need to stir this or something. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. You know, if you do any artwork at all that's enjoyable, that somebody likes to look at, I, I don't care if you're professional or an amateur or whatever, you should put your name on it and the date and maybe a title. You should at least put your name on the front of it. On the back of it, you can write down some information. What did you, why did you paint this painting? What, what, did, what inspired you? What got you, you know... What's the subject matter? It may not mean anything to you, but to somebody 100 or 200 years from now, it might be important. Somebody might like your painting. And you don't know. You know, Van Gogh only sold a couple of paintings in his entire career. I've heard some people say one. I've heard some people say three. Other people say he sold 10 or 15, but they were really cheap. Today, those things are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And at the time, he thought he was a complete failure. Total, complete failure. So, my advice is, you know, take pride in your work. And, um, yeah, you should just sign your paintings. And maybe even your drawings, if it's a finished drawing. Because someday, somebody may be looking at it and say, hey, this is great. And they'd like to know, what was the name of the person who did this? They, they may not be able to find any history on you, or they may be able to. You know, if you Google my name, and you do some research, you can find out some info about me. Okay, uh, what I've done in the past, other things. Um, so yeah, I would put something on here, man. All right, so boy, this thing just doesn't want to. I don't know what I've done. Maybe I need a new tip and clean that one. Let's try that. I think I need to soak all these tips in some turpentine. <clears throat> and I think that would probably help clean them up. I think I'll do that tonight. I'm trying to get my art world going again. I've been, last summer, I was unemployed for four months, which was terrible. And as some of you know, before that I had cancer last year. And so I'm trying to put my life back together after all these little misadventures. And it's still taking me some time. Oh yeah, that's better. I think I'm going to call this Sea Beasties in the Foothills of the Candy Mountains. But that's not all going to fit on there, so I'll just put down what will fit. 
And then on the back, I can write the full title out. And maybe a little bit about why I painted it. Okay, so that's basically ready to go. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. I can live with that. We're going to do another Sea Beasties picture here in the next couple of weeks. i got some other ideas. i got some ideas to really change the Sea Beasties s series quite a bit. But I haven't gotten around to doing it. Because I'm still fighting with this job thing. And on top of that... I'm trying to do everything else in life that I normally have to do. Which is pretty busy. Now see these things, I get these little cups, they, I get these bath salts here in Germany. And this is the top from TSEP, this is the top of the container. And it makes perfect, it's absolutely perfect for painting. I love these things. It's got a nice big wide mouth, you don't need to put a lot of water in it. I use, I use distilled water. Because that's theoretically supposed to be better. It doesn't have a bunch of additives or stuff in it. And so, yeah. It's kind of cool. Oops. Yeah, these pen points come apart. I get these things here in the, the stores in Germany, too. Um... I think it's the name of the company that makes these. Hold on, I got it right here. Hero Lynn Art. Fine tips for art and calligraphy since 1856. Set number three. Um, band tips and poster tips. Or something similar to that. I know what it means in German. It's sort of hard to translate into English. Some of the things in English and German just don't translate very well with each other. Okay, so I'm actually feeling like working on this a little bit. Let's see if I got this right. Yeah, that looks about good. This is one of the canals in Groningen. It's the North Canal around the uh, center of the old city. And um, it's looking north from the southern bank. And Groningen is actually just one of my favorite places on the face of the earth. It's just amazing. It's a really beautiful Dutch city um, with really nice people. It's actually an old smuggler's city. Um, so that makes it kind of interesting. There's still some smuggling going on there, to be quite frankly honest with you. Um, and yeah, I spent a lot of time in Groningen. I haven't been back there now in almost two years. Um, between cancer, moving, and all the other problems that I've had, it just hasn't been possible. Um, but hopefully I'll get back there at some point. I don't know. We'll see. It's hard to say. I'm, I'm real interested in going to Prague as well. Um, because Prague is only about four hours from here, and now Holland is eight hours by train or ten. It's a lot harder to get to Holland than it is to get to Prague. <clears throat> Prague is an easy train ride. <clears throat> ten hours on a German train is okay, but eh, it's a little hard. <clears throat> I don't know. We'll see what happens when the pandemic is over. Hopefully, they'll get the uh, the vaccine here in Germany pretty soon. And hopefully when they do, we'll get inoculated pretty quickly. <clears throat> and then, hopefully, life might actually return to something like normal. We can only hope for that. So, let me see here. Just a little bit. Just end that. Or maybe not. Or maybe so. Um, I have a picture on my television screen to kind of give me some guidance as to what I'm doing here. I work a lot from photos, obviously. I'll, I'll put a I'll put a copy of this photo in here so you guys can see it. 
I do sometimes paint plain air out on the site um, in the summer when things are nice out. Um, yeah. However, I'm just too completely lazy to do that in the winter time. I, I spent a number of years in the army. I, I don't like being cold. I also spent quite a number of years being a semi-professional sort of bicycle racer in the United States. And uh, cold, wet, and miserable, I, I've had enough of that to last me a long time. It is just not my thing. Okay. Looks okay. These have a little bit of blue in them. Yeah, I like working. I'm, I've always been sort of a studio guy in a lot of ways. Although when I was in architecture school many years ago, we did spend quite a quite a bit of time out sketching in our sketchbooks. On site, um, Professor Egger used to take the entire class out, and we'd go somewhere, one of the little towns around Blacksburg, Virginia, and we spend the entire four-hour class drawing on site. It was actually pretty cool. And it was also good because it was in a rather rednecky part of America. And there are some people in those parts who don't really think that you should be sitting out drawing on the street. But if there's 25 of you and they can see it's a class, they're a lot cooler about it. That, by the way, was not all people by all means. There were plenty of very good people down there. But, I'm sorry to say, some people aren't. I had the same problem when I was in Tennessee and I was doing photography. And, um, I had a couple incidents there. I had a big 4x5 box camera that I was using. And some medium format camera gear. And, um, there were times when some of the locals thought it was their business to harass the daylights out of me. So... I don't quite understand what's wrong with people that they think they have to behave like that. But so yeah, we're putting in the sun here. It's catching on these paintings. Or catching on these windows, I should say. keep checking my reference over here and that also means that I gotta keep putting my glasses back on. I'm 59 years old and for a long time I was blind as a bat and now my eyes of course because as you get older your eyes change they um, change their shape because of uh, age and dehydration to your body and um so yeah, now when I can see, I can sort of see close up now. Like, when I paint like this, I prefer to do it without any glasses. My near vision is really good today. I was blind as a bat for a long time. I had to do all of this with glasses on. <clears throat> Some of the advantages of getting older. I'm using a mixture of cerulean blue and a bright blue from White Knights. Sorry, I'm pausing. I'm thinking here about how to do this. You see the other parts of these windows where you don't see the blue is going to be sort of dark gray. And so I have to kind of get the blue on and do that correctly before I put on the gray because the gray is going to knock everything out of here whatever I put the gray over it's going to it's going to downtone everything else I might do a second I got an idea for a second painting that's somewhat similar to this one. It's a 
couple of hundred meters over this way, but it's also very cool looking. I actually have a collection of several thousand photographs from this place. So it's quite possible. Oh, look at you. Go away. You're interfering with my art class. <clears throat> Alright. Um, that's more or less it. Uh, there's a little bit of blue in that. It was sort of a gray day when I took this shot. I think I've mentioned this before. Holland is just an amazing place. As far as like the sunshine, it's like Taos, New Mexico. It's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. What it looks like there. You just, you can't go wrong with it. There's some places in this world, like I've said, where the light is just stunning. By the way, I saw, I looked at my video today from last week. It's been seven days. I got 32 views. I don't know how that happened. That that was cool, man. Thank you for watching. Um, I had originally set this up without realizing that if, that if I turn it on for kids, then it won't let you make comments. So I'm fixing that. I, I thought that I was doing something cool that way, but apparently you can't leave comments. So starting with this video, I'll have that fixed. And you'll be able to make all the comments you want. Which is probably a good thing. And please do. Please feel free to leave comments if you like something, if you've got questions. Um, if you want me to talk about something. Um, generally I'll talk about pretty much anything. Um, I'm not a big fan of politics. So maybe we'll skip on that. But, I don't know, we'll see. I'm not going to really do a lot of detail here in this part of the boat, but I'm going to suggest detail. I'm going to let your imagination fill in what's not really there. I've changed the design of this a little bit anyways. <clears throat> Good. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> now, where is safe to paint? Um, probably. <clears throat> A little bit of gray here. In the past, I've always put music on the background of these things. Maybe I'll try talking a bit more. Usually when I paint, if I'm not making a video, I usually listen to some music. I like jazz for painting and programming. That's what I do in real life. I'm an engineer. These days I do a lot of programming. Although that may change, I may be doing hardware again at some point. Um, but yeah, I like listening to jazz, and I'll tell you what else is good for programming and painting that I find is this dubstep. 
And it puts me in a really good mood for this sometimes. And sometimes I listen to classical. And also as well, sometimes I listen to medieval lute music. A couple of other different things. Like sort of like renaissance type music. Um, sometimes I listen to rock and stuff. I was really big into that when I was younger. Today it's a little too, I don't know what, a little too energetic. Today, like when I'm doing this kind of work, I like something that leaves me in a really calm state of mind. Makes it a lot easier. But yeah, I can't do that because normally I listen to music on uh, YouTube. And uh, I don't have license to any of that stuff. And so using it as background music is a bad idea. They could take down all my videos. So I don't do it. And that's cool. I, I understand that. that that's alright. The music that I use is made by my friends who are musicians. Long ago I was involved in the music business quite extensively. And I still have a lot of contacts in that industry. You know, this was okay, using this normal brush, but I think for the next layer, for the next brush load, I think I'm going to try something a little different, maybe. These windows that are full windows, I think they might work better if I used a square brush. Let me try that. I'm always experimenting, man. I like to experiment. And if you're trying to be an artist, you should experiment too, by all means. Don't hesitate. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Nobody cares if it's perfect. I mean, maybe someday you'll be Rembrandt or somebody like that, but all those people experimented like crazy too. You can get a hold of Da Vinci's notebooks online today. I had a paper copy when I was young. And, um, everybody who was good spent loads and loads of time just experimenting and sketching and, and having fun with the paints and stuff. It's not always about creating a masterpiece. And if you think like that, it's going to slow you down. Big time. I wonder why all these doors are black over there. It's kind of boring. I got a feeling a couple hundred years ago they might have been different colors. You look back, you look back at the paintings from say two, three hundred years ago of Holland. It was at least as colorful as it is today, and probably a lot more so. Yeah, I don't know. This brush does seem to work pretty well for what I'm doing. <clears throat> See, now here I had the brush with too much paint on it. And so I went around and unloaded some of it in different places, and I'll go back. There's an optimum amount, I feel. It depends on what you're doing. If you're doing detail, you don't want the brush overloaded because then it just blobs up. If you're laying in some kind of background, I 
that's different. Then yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I'm working on these windows. <clears throat> um, take a look here. Okay, so for instance, I'm not going to take you through the whole process. I'll probably take a break here after a bit. And here... Here I'm using what's called a rigger. As you can see, kind of delicate work, but it comes out looking all right. A rigger is a brush that was designed to do rigging on ship pictures. It's also called a liner. And it's one of the secrets to painting this kind of painting. It requires a really delicate touch. You don't need to push hard. And if you notice, maybe if I bring this over a little bit, you can see the windows really start to stand out. Fortunately, my hands are still a little shaky compared to what they were back in the past. But it's all good. This is a number two, that's pretty big.
Okay, it's starting to look like a building. There's a few other tricks I gotta pull in there, but it's starting to look all right. And not everything is gonna get that treatment. All of these windows are a little bit different. This is gonna be, gonna be a real slow process. Like I said, I'm not sure I'm gonna I'm going to do the whole thing here. Okay, so, let me see here, where am I at? Oh, there's lots of stuff that still has to happen here. There's a lot of this detail work in this painting. A lot of stuff that has to go in here in sort of dull browns or dull grays, <coughs> pardon me, to make it really look, how do I put it, to make it look three-dimensional, that's what I want to say. Now, somewhere, right there, that's the number one, that's the number four, somewhere, somewhere I thought I had a zero. Perfect. This is perfect for certain things. Now, really make this work. You gotta take all the extra off. I know of no better way to draw fine lines. So, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to take a little break right there. I'm going to go work on this painting some, and I'll come back. 
after I've done, I don't know, somewhere between this and maybe this many of the buildings and maybe a little bit of the boats over here, and then we'll talk about what I did. Basically, that's how I'm gonna build it up from here. It needs more work with the brickwork and stuff, and the tiles to make it look three-dimensional, but we'll get it there. Okay, so enough of this episode, and we'll see you soon on the next one.